this video is going to be showing you a solo Grandmaster Nightfall on a Warlock. Getting the Hung Jury Adept as well for those that just want to see this. Then skip to the timestamps on the screen, wherever, which part you want. Where the run starts, or you maybe want the boss fight, or you want the play mechanics. Whatever you want, skip to. But if you're new to it, you need to watch the whole thing. Especially if you want to do it. If you really want to do this yourself, you need to watch the whole thing. If you're just watching it because you want to watch the video, then just watch what part you want to watch. So this is going to be how to safely secure your Grandmaster Solo for the Triumph, and I guess for Hung Jury as well, because the way Inside Terminus works is you sort of really get Platinum anyways by just doing it. You don't really skip Champions anyways, so you're going to get Platinum while doing your Solo anyway. So you, there's a high chance you're going to get Hung Jury regardless. Make sure you put the Vanguard mod on Prosperity on your Ghost. Mods, I've already talked about this in the Titan. I've already done the Titan Grandmaster Souls, so if you want to see that one. i already done that one previously. So I've talked at an ex a great extent about the modifiers on that one, so I'm not going to talk about them in this one. So we're using Stasis Shared Binder. That's going to be the safest class, I believe, to do this on, uh, across all of them. There are classes that will do this quicker. There are classes that will be um, different in the way they work. But this is, I believe, going to be the easiest to most people. Especially if you're a Warlock man. So we go Heal and Rift. Uh, doesn't matter what nade you choose, your grenade. The aspects matter, because this is going to be a turret, a turret build, a stasis turret build. So in order to get that, you want Bleak Watcher on. Ice Flare Bolt, which assists with the turret. You want Whisper of Chains, Whisper of Durance, Whisper of Fishes, Whisper of Torment. This is what I've got on. You can switch around a couple of whispers to your playstyle. This is what I like. But Whisper of Torment is best in class for the turret build. So you put that on. Because you can see you get grand energy when you take damage, which is a lot of damage because you're solo and you're in a Grandmaster. So you want that on. Whisper of Durance is another one because your turret slows enemies. So that buffs that. So you want that on. Whisper of Fishes is a mod that you could change off, but I like it because when you kill a frozen tiger, which is a lot, because you constantly spam your turret, you get um, increased damage of the burst of the f after the ta frozen target's killed. If there's a lot of ads around that target, you get more burst damage, and it's noticeable, so I use that. And Whisper of Change is a plus 10 recovery, so it helps out with your setup when you're building your stats because your recovery and your discipline is so important so I would advise put a whisper of chains on if your build allows you to not use it then you could use something else but you take reduced damage when there's frozen targets about and that to me is really good we're going to be using the exotic helmet the stag which gives you heal and rifts on demand when you are critically wounded that happens all the time in this so this exotic is best in class for me in my eyes with this setup but there are other exotics I could have used. We're using Dynamo on the e helmet, GL Ammo Finder, Protective Light build. We have various ways to get Protective Light. We have Shield Break Charge, Blast Radius, and Taken Charge. We have three ways of getting Protective Light, which means we're going to have Protective Light up nearly all the time. Blast Radius means a double kill with your GL, which is easy to do with our setup. So you get protective light there. Shield break charge. There's a couple of shield breaks. We'll get it there. And take and charge from orbs of light. We'll get protective light as well. We've got all the scavenger perks to match our weapons. Breach and clear on, of course, which debuffs enemies. Uh, solar damage, resistance, and concussive damage is so important. So master work a solar chest plate if you don't have one. It's so important to have that on. I think this helps out so much. So put that on. Obviously we've got Antibiotic Scout, Unstoppable GL. We're using the Exotic Grain Launcher with a Horde. A Vouchsafe Scout Rifle. And Corrective Measure, which is a raid weapon. So if you don't have it, I understand. Then use any other Void LMG. You've got one here from this season. Or use the Seven Seraph Saw, which is available to anyone. And this machine gun's really good even if you're not using cells it's still really good but a machine gun works out really well in this run so make sure you use something like that but you do need void shields covered in your setup but that was what we were using so like with any other commentary run we'll give you exact 
strategies, moment to moment gameplay, so commentating while the gameplay is going on, um, exactly detailing why we're standing where we're standing, when are we using our abilities, why are we doing A, B, or C? Okay, so with this start section, just be careful your sparrow doesn't despawn. Sparrows don't despawn now, so if the ads shoot your sparrow, it will explode on you and wipe you. So just be careful of that. You've noticed there's a barrier there. He did. He teleports. Let him teleport. You can freeze him sometimes, but you don't need to really. Just let the barrier teleport because taking him from this location is actually easy anyways because there's plenty of cover. Start off and lead with a healing rift. When I say lead with a healing rift, I mean do you put your healing rift down near cover straight away? Because if you do get one shot. You'll get your healing rift back anyways, because that's the setup we've got on. Take the barrier, uh, take the over, uh, the minotaur first, the void shield minotaur, take him first. When you've done that, you want to do your stasis nade. This will then freeze um, both barriers, depending on your nade placement. Ideally, you want to focus on the right uh, barrier, because if you take the left one, the right one will hit you. <clears throat> now, void resistance void damage incoming is on some of the champions do void some of them don't these particular ones do so you've got to be careful of them then when we're on to the second barrier just be careful because there's three goblins that push i was confident enough to take it though because uh, i was using my machine gun in between a shield break but if you're not confident on doing that wait for the three goblins to come to you to push take the three goblins then take the barrier on his own okay because it can be dangerous if there's three ads hitting you like that and there's a chance you might miss the shield break because you're dealing with the goblins it, my build allows for it though because i'm using a machine gun that's the utility of a machine gun in this you could have used a rocket launcher i was gonna i was close to using my royal entry which i've got a couple of god roll ones <clears throat> the thing is dps isn't required in this um DPS, funnily enough, in Destiny, isn't important when you're playing solo. If you're doing an activity like this, getting high burst damage out isn't Im isn't important. Because of how champions work, because of how it all works, you just need to make sure you get a shield break when you get a shield break. So, consistent damage, total damage over time. People get themselves confused, especially a couple of videos I've, I've made a month ago or so. They get themselves confused between DBS and total damage. They are two different complete things. But I can tell you right now, for things like this, burst damage isn't really needed. What's needed is um, total damage and the utility of the weapon. Now, the utility of the weapon, take a weapon like Riverhog where I'm using, it's one of the most versatile weapons in the game. Because it's good on ad clear, it's good on single target damage overall. It, you know, it's a weapon where you let it tick, it does damage over time. It's like uh, Anarchy. Obviously, it's not as good as Anarchy, but it's close to. And bear in mind, it's a kinetic weapon. People shouldn't compare these two weapons because that's, compa that's like comparing uh, 1k voices to a legendary fusion. They're both fusion rifles, but one's a heavy and one's a energy weapon. So how are they the same? They're not. They are the same, but they're in two different slots. So, yes, Wither Horde isn't as good as Anarchy, but it's, in my books, it's the most powerful, uh, most well-used weapon for the energy, energy slots. Um, I will put it up there with Telesto uh, or which they're also both fantastic weapons, depending on what you know, setup you're using. Um, but we use a super there to clear out the Cabal. There's two purposes to why I use the super there, and it, it, it might look like I've wasted it, but I haven't. The reason for that is because you aggro the champion that's over the other side. See, what it is in this game, and you won't realise sometimes if you're playing in a team, but ads can move their positioning depending on how fast or slow you are. So say, for example, I was taking my time with those two groups of Cabal I just took out with my super. The barrier will de-aggro, which means he'll back off, into the left corner. I don't want that. I want to take him out now. Um, it's going to be a bit harder taking him out now because you've got a Weaver Horde from a great distance. But if you're good enough with Weaver Horde, 
you can do it. Um, if not, if you do let him de aggro, he'll go around that corner, and that's fine. You'll just take the ads and then you'll take him at the end. Depends how you want to do it. Um, but I prefer doing it like this, taking him from a, a distance. Once the barrier champion is killed, there's then obviously all the snipers, which is like six, five snipers. There's a bunch of legionaries. Now, um, your cover is so important here because obviously snipers are very dangerous in grandmasters. In some grandmasters, they one shot you if you don't match your resistances. In this one, I've got solar damage resistance on, so they won't one shot me. Um, they won't one shot anyways because void incoming is on. If solar resistance was on, uh, so, sorry, income and solar was on, then these snipers would one shot if you didn't have a solar chest plate on with the resistance. So, but what I will say is if four snipers, three snipers hit you all at once, that's a death. So, peak shoot the snipers and take your time and be patient. This is a patience game, it's not skillful. This. It's not a skilled run in terms of look at this. And a lot of grandmasters aren't, unless they'd been done really fast which there's some people that do and they're amazing but um this is more of how do you do it um slower but you're more likely to do it than this is that sort of run so we'll take down the rest of the ads be careful because some ads hide when there's see that's another thing with ads as well is when there's more ads alive they are more likely to be aggroed on you and they'll push you, they'll do their nades, they'll do all that stuff. But when there's maybe two or three left, they're uh, threatened by you. Okay? So then they're threatened by you, then they go to cover. And they'll peek shoot you or something. So that's just the nature of the ads in this game. Which, um, I can't know a lot of people, the AI is really bad in this game. I would beg to differ by a lot. I've played a lot of games, um, shooter games, I guess. And I haven't seen AI behaviour as good in a, in a lot of years in any game as good as this i was playing obviously we played the um board i played borderlands and i played the new outriders the ai in that game is terrible like destiny outclasses that by a mile in terms of ai behavior with the plate mechanic anyways getting back, back to the topic you do your turret build to make sure you've got a turret and then a heal and rift turret heal and rift and then take out all the ads if you're lucky enough um, a cabal, one of the cabals could get frozen at the back and you just leave him alive and that will not, that will cheese this, it will mean there will be no unstoppable spawn and you will still get platinum at the end because they haven't spawned in. I'm fine with that, I didn't end up getting what I wanted which is fine because the unstoppables are so easy to deal with, I'll just take them anyways. This is at least going to show you worst case scenario, if you don't get the cheese done then this is how you take them out the gym. It's it's not hard. Either way, it, I wouldn't even say it's a cheat. That's not even a cheat. It's just an exploit. Um, but if you don't end up doing that, that's fine. You can just back off into the tunnel. Use Weaver Hard. Weaver Hard can stun a champion twice from one shot. So can Anarchy. They are the only green launchers that I believe can do it. Um, Prospector might as well because it has that damage over time type of thing that it does. With the explosive detonators i don't know because i haven't um i did use it in a master a couple of weeks ago but i haven't tried it in um grandmaster but i do know definitely anarchy we've had can stun in one shot just going to keep stunning them over and over this is the utility of this weapon as i say it's fantastic it's better than any sniper in the game. Um, I just love this weapon. It's one of the best exotics they've made. I would say this is an Angus Burden. That was an amazing weapon. Jitun. Telesto's been an amazing weapon. Obviously that was from day one, but it's it's an ex a feel it's an exotic that gives you a feeling of this is its playstyle. And I think what it is, people can't use with a hard because it's they don't like the aiming on it they miss enemies and it's a thing of i've got 20k plus kills on my with a hard so i'm i'm trained on the playstyle of with a hard you need to be trained up on it 
If you just start using Revive, you're going to say, this is rubbish. What is this grey launcher? It's not good. But once you figure out how to use it, the mechanics of it, the double stacking of it, you know, how to aim with it, the arc of the nade, because the arc of the nade that it shoots is different to maybe uh, a legendary kinetic. So you've got to train yourself up with this exotic. It's just like Izanagi's Burden. You've got to train yourself up with that weapon to be good with it. And it's one of the best weapons in the game when you do know. So we shot the boss there, as you saw, to spawn in um, more adds. This also deters an, an extra a barrier from spawning. So you get less barriers if you do what I've just done. And you also run to the back of the map where I am. It's an easier way of doing it, I think, because the first barrier will push you. Well, actually, there's only one barrier and one unstoppable up right now. When there should be two. There should be two barriers and there should be one unstoppable. But there's only one of each. So that makes things a lot easier. Because they are the most dangerous threat in this. The, if we were to say, what is the um, enemy that does the most damage to you rapidly? Well, maybe it's the boss, but you can avoid that. It's a Colossus. They can catch you off guard if you don't peek you correctly, if you don't time your shield breaks properly. Like right now, I'm getting sustained fire. Did you see that? I strafed left. I knew I was getting the fire. You've got to know when to strafe in and out because they wreck it so fast. But the solar resistance helps against them. You don't need void resistance because nothing does void. Barely. There's a couple of champions. They're controllable. There's a couple of... Um, Minotaurs, they're controllable, so all the void is under control. So when I'm looking at a Nightfall, I'm always looking at what can I control, what can I not? I can control the void easily, I can dodge all that stuff. Arc, is, it is a threat, but Arc incoming isn't on, so it's not that much of a threat. Solar isn't on, but the Colossus, the way they work, they melt regardless. And you deli you're dealing with a lot of Colossus, so... Overall, I think that's better, and you've got a lot of snipers to deal with. <clears throat> so I think solar resistance is the way to go, and then pair that with a concussive. So when we kill the barrier, we want to kill the um, scions at the back of the map, back left. Take them from here, because they have range drop-off. Enemies have range drop-off. So the snipers, even though they're snipers, if you stand at a certain location, they won't snipe you. The closer you get to them, the more they come threatened, and then they'll start sniping. You don't want that at all. Take them from a distance. Eliminate risk. When you're doing a solo like this, you're not playing fancy. You're playing to eliminate risk. Get it done so you can go about your day and do other things. You don't want to be playing this game all day just to get a Grandmaster solo. You want to get it done in an hour or two maximum. If you're new to it completely, you should be able to get it done in three or four runs. As long as you follow the, the um, positioning, then it becomes a lot easier. What you'll find is, if someone's new to something, it's they're dying probably because they don't know enough about the activity that they're doing, and that's why they're dying. It's not a skill issue, it's a strategy issue. But once you know the strategy, once you know how to play something, and that's that goes for anything you're playing in this game. Once you know how to play it, you're fine. You'll know how to do it. It's just execution at that point. It's on you to do the run. It's not RNG. There's very little RNG with this run. I often say in my runs, you know, RNG, RNG. I always do. But in this case, it isn't. There's no RNG. Everything, as long as you um, go by the script, go by the story, you'll do it. If you don't and you start taking risks when you don't need to, just to save five minutes, that's where you're going to get your deaths. So with this unstoppable... Um, we're trying to take him out. The, I was trying to do something on this run where... Because what happens is, the Unstoppable Champion dies. When the Unstoppable dies, you get a barrier this end. But what I'm trying to do is, spawn kill adds. You'll see right now. So I do this. I got the wrong location. That's fine. I wasn't sure which portal it come out of. I think the barrier comes out of left or right, one of the two. But essentially, what I was wanting to do is put a turret up early to sort of spawn trap the ads. Now you want to play the stairs and have the two gladiators, if they do push you, you need to take them. Take them with your machine gun, take them with your hard, whatever you want to do. Just look at, always be thinking in advance. So I looked on the island before, when I was taking the unstoppable, and I was thinking, right, what special have I got? Have I got any heavy on the floor? Have I? Okay, well, I'm gonna, I have a bit of freedom to use my machine gun, I'll use it. 
you know so that's everything you need to sort of take into account I was a bit slow on shield breaks here for whatever reason I, I, my rhythm was off so that's fine though because with river hard he has a lot of ammo literally one or two shots from river hard combined with your scout rifle will take a chance so the, you know the gun holds 20 21 so you've got all the killing power for champs within your weapon. All you need to do is get your timing down for the scouts. Let Weaver Horde do the work. It's like when you play with Anarchy. Let Anarchy do the work. Right? But Anarchy is a little bit different because if you tag a champion, you need to make sure you don't explode the Anarchy shots. Which you can easily with an explosive payload weapon. Um, and that's the downside to Anarchy where Weaver Horde has a bonus to that. Because when you shoot a um, champion it bodies the champion so you can't do anything to that champion to stop weaver hard from working so that's a bonus to weaver hard that's one bonus to it but obviously there's a lot of other bonuses with anarchy than what there is with weaver hard so this is on the second phase of this room the main second phase so i've done it i've placed a turret build on that island in front of me because of that barrier He's going to push. There's two barriers this time. There's two barriers, one and double. I always know that one barrier will push, one barrier stays back. So you're playing for the first barrier. If I was on that island and there's two barriers attacking me, that's a death. So that's again, it comes down to positioning. I'm at the back of the map. I can't be killed because I'm at the back of the map. As long as I strafe in and out of cover and do what I need to do, that's fine. Protective light saved us there. Um, but that's why I've got this set up on. It is a little bit difficult get, getting your Weaver Hard shots at distance sometimes. It's just a case of taking your time with the shot. Not too long, of course. But if you get one or two sticks, you're good. Obviously, an explosive payload scout's going to help you out tremendously. So... That, that's a big thing, so make sure that you farm in your Dreaming City to get, which I farmed it, I would say five weeks on the go last season, and I eventually did get it, just make sure you do your sending challenges, all your Shattered Thrones and all three characters, um, I believe it drops from the Blind Well, all those sort of activities. So, same again, we're repeating from the first phase, you'll have Scions at the back left, you'll have Ads in the middle, uh, so you want to prioritise the Snipers first, before anything, kill your Snipers before you even consider pushing up, because as I said, three Snipers, two Snipers, they'll kill you, even with Solar Resist on, so you don't want to be pushing up, because that will then aggro the Ads on you, and they'll try to snipe you, whereas back here they don't, they, they are do docile back here. Before we push this island, I'm going to do a stasis turret. That's going to do a lot of work for me, and it's going to put all the ads into position. This is a good position to stand, because all the ads cover up nicely. I pop a server, because we've got that to use. Uh, and we'll get to killing all the leg legionaries, or as many as possible, because once your server ends, any legionaries are still alive will back up to where the barrier and unstoppable is, because that's just how their, ad their AI works. They're going to shield the barrier. They're going to make it difficult. But the more ads you kill right now, the better off you're going to be. But then again, if there's ads left alive, you can still use your turret to freeze everything. And it gives you that moment um, of rest to sort of shoot at an enemy without the enemy shooting at you. Which is a big deal. That's why things like blind and grenade GLs are so good. Because you can hit an ad, or you can freeze an ad with your build, whatever, with your stasis. And it gives you that moment to sort of shoot an ad and you don't have to worry about being one shot or melted so far. So we're going to do a turret right here because that's where the barrier and stuff will hang out. The goal right now isn't to really do any damage to champions. We, we are doing damage to the unstoppable which wasn't, that was sort of by accident. He just walked into my wither horde shot on the ground. My goal was to take out the phalanx and any legionaries left. Once all that's done, we then focus the barrier first. The unstoppable, no, because the unstoppable can't hit you really from here. But the barrier certainly can, so you want to melt. Use some heavy on him as well, 
get him out of the way because this is not a good angle sometimes to take him um, but if you're going to take him from here sort of commit to the kill use a bit of heavy because uh, you know you have got a machine gun that's what it's there for it's there to be used you don't want to just be sitting there with max heavy for the full run I'm sort of somebody who conserves ammo as it is but I do use it when I really need to and that's the key when the unstoppable dies there'll be an extra set of wave of ads the unstoppable drops an orb whatever you do don't pick the orb up if you pick up the orb it spawns in the anti-barrier that means you're going to have a barrier and you're going to have cabal with the barrier why are you doing that well you're going to make it harder so don't do that leave the orb on the ground come back to this safe zone use your stasis near your turrets and just chill down here take them with your scout your weaver horde because they group up really nicely for weaver horde uh, and just take them all out then when you've dealt with this bit you can then de deal with your barrier in middle so again it's, it's that methodical approach of picking the encounter apart bit by bit rather than trying to do everything at once on masters sure will take everything at once because you you can do that on lower difficulty night poles you can take the risks because you're a lot more tankier on grandmaster you're not you're locked you're locked to that power resistances aren't higher the only way you can get better resistance is by specking for a certain element or concussive dampener but other than that that's all you've got so you need to play cautiously if you don't know what you're doing if you know exactly what you're doing you don't need to watch this video do you you can go ahead and do your, your runs on your own and farm that but this is more for, for people who need these extra assistance once you come and all the ads are down you can then go for your orb be mindful of ammo, like what ammo's on the floor. I know I've got a bunch of Weaver Horde on the floor. I get like eight shots per brick, depending on what type of brick that is. Because there's ammo finder bricks and the standard bricks. The standard bricks will give you eight, nine, whatever, what have you, you know, with your GL scavenger. The ammo finders are only two or three. So just be mindful of what's what. Uh, the ammo finder bricks glow lighter than a standard brick. We're going to do a Weaver Horde shot straight away the barrier is going to jump about so just be careful always be close to cover because that's your exit strategy just in case the barrier does start doing something odd because he will do he's jumping about stand close to cover so that you know that if you, if you are caught off guard you can strafe into that cover and you won't die because point point blank range that colossus will wreck you no matter whether you are protective light on or not like if it's point blank range and you don't have any cover if, you, if you've left yourself out in the open these two barriers aren't too bad this barrier is going to be a bit more difficult for people because it's from a lot of range and there's no real good angle for this barrier apart from right here because the problem is the second barrier up the stairs can hit you from range sometimes this angle is just straight from left and right the top barrier you can't see is only the bottom barrier so as long as you can do your river hard shots from here then you're more than comfortable to take him. Even if you don't stick him, doing a barry uh, doing a river hard shot on the floor, as you can see, does sufficient damage. You're getting the debuff on him as well with bridge and clear. So you can reliably still take him down. And that's what I was saying. Like I wasn't doing a lot of damage there, but I've still taken a Grandmaster Champion out on my own. How have we done that? Well we've got a, a very versatile weapon on. So that's what you need to think about. DPS isn't important. What's important is total damage. What is the total damage of that weapon? That's what's important. Okay? Because you're taking the damage out in stages anyways. So now we come to this location here. And we can do a turret nade up top. Which I advise doing. Because you want to take out all the legionaries and the gladiators. It's the same thing. And you always take the barrier last. We get a good nade going, so that's stunning. That's freezing all targets. Just be careful of the gladiators, of course. The slow will help if they are slowed. That, that's where the durance comes in, the whisper of durance. It'll help out a little bit there. Uh, but don't let them come to you. They will almost one-shot you. Okay? Okay. 
So don't let them melee you, whatever you do. Always back up. Now we can head glitches champion, which you can do this so easily on the stairs. Use your melee as well if you want at any time to freeze champs. It's useful for that. Um, for those moments. And other than that, that's that main room done. So that's basically most of this run done. It's just the boss fight now that you need to master. Which, up until this point, there's been nothing threatening enough to wipe us. Uh, the Colossus maybe, but if you know how to control them and play smart enough, you're okay. So it's what's going to be the hardest thing for people is the boss fight. But again, if you know what you're doing with the boss fight, because encounters have changed, the way mechanics have changed in the Nightfall over the years in this. Uh, and people might not be aware. I wasn't aware. It changed in Beyond Light, I believe. But I didn't know that they changed it. it I didn't know that they'll change it until maybe a couple of seasons after. I don't think any, most people knew about it. It wasn't until a couple of months ago where people started saying, right, this is actually what happens with the spawn of these ads. You know? But there'll be people out there that still think the pl the plates work the way they used to. Because, you know, you don't know any better. If you don't come in here and do them, you wouldn't know. We used a uh, stasis turret on the Vex there. It just They are threatening because they're all headless. So they're coming after you, so it's worth just doing your stasis nade and then wipe them with your wither hordes, your scout, what have you. It just takes it out easy. There's going to be more headless goblin and they're dangerous as well in this little tunnel because there's no cover, there's nowhere to walk to. And if three or four of them get some shots on you, you're dead. So you want to make sure that I would, I would definitely just do a stasis nade. Do your stasis turret and wipe them with either your machine gun or do a wither horde at the floor. Definitely pop a healing rift because you're going to get your healing rift back anyways. You are going to want 100%. The first plate you capture, you need um, your super, you need a healing rift, and you need your stasis nade. But because we've got so high stats, you know, we've got the high recovery, we've got the high discipline, we'll get all that stuff back. So we're fine. If your stats are lower than mine, just wait in this tunnel just a little bit longer before you start the boss fight. My cooldowns are okay, so we go. Also, when you're coming to the boss fight, make sure you shoot the Hydra and the some of the Minotaurs. Try and get some shots, because they may drop you heavy, they may drop you special. That's ammo on the floor for later on in the fight. Because it's such a long fight, the more ammo for later, the better. So make sure you do that little optimization. Again, you might not get any ammo drops, but then again you might. You don't know. So with the first plate capture, um, we're going to look right in front. There'll be two cabal that come out. There'll be dogs that come from right and left portal. Put a nade, a stasis nade, in the middle. Then you do your healing rift in good time, of course. We were hard at the floor, a bit of machine gun. If they're getting too close, pop it Because the last thing you want is those ads getting onto your plate and having it red. You want to stun them before they get anywhere close. And you can do that reliably. I mean, I didn't really do perfect there, and I still got the player in good time. So that's where the super, the Roman super comes out really handy. And plus it's, you know, freezing everything, killing everything. That's the main thing that you want. Then, um, we're looking for boss damage. Now, I come to the right side. I've done this with Anarchy, which worked out really good with Anarchy, but with, with, with a hard, not so. Um, it, I found it better to do damage to him in middle because you could just sort of spam it. You know, shots will go on the floor because automatically what will happen is the boss will dodge. As soon as you press the trigger on your, um, you know, on your either your keyboard or your controller, he's going to dodge your attack. That's just what he. That's just what he does. So what I do is, um, I'm going to sort of do jump shot with a hod strategy from middle. Because of the block that's in front of me, um, he can't hit you with his void blast attack. Now, incoming void is on, and I haven't got void damage resistance on, so it will melt me. It melts anyways, even if you've got void resistance on. But having known that you've got a bit of safety standing where I am. 
um, is really good. It means we can do reliable damage. I can stand on this block occasionally, but I don't always. Especially when there's adds. Now, the adds are fixed to the boss. If you watch my Titan run, I'm going to repeat a lot of stuff that you've already heard. But, I'm going to assume you haven't watched the Titan run because it's Warlock Mains watching this. So, I'm going to repeat a lot of stuff about this fight. So, if that annoys you, that annoys you. It can't be helped. So, we're going to do healing risks regularly because, obviously, if we get one shot, we've got another healing risk to go. But you want to keep putting your stasis turret in middle and what this allows is the adds will group up in middle with the boss. This is really good, it also means that you can farm protective lights. And so there will be times when you, you do get hit, and as you can see, shelter by the void, propped. But we can uh, re-up our charge of light. Just the only thing we need to do is get a double kill with river hog, which is really easy to do, even on Grandmaster. You know, or make some orbs or break a shield, which all three of those opportunities happen in this fight. Depending on where you stand depends on what the adds do. If you stand where I am right now, like slightly to the right, adds will push to the right. But if you stand more central, they'll move to the boss. They'll follow your position. So knowing that information is really good, because once you come to the middle, you just want to be jumping up and down. You jump up and down so that the adds can't hit you, you're safer than what you think. The void stuff on the bottom of the floor won't hit you. Always look below when you're landing. Because how the void attack works is he'll do three waves. So as long as you're standing in the middle of that wave, we got weak there. I got caught off by nades, so always watch your nades. But as you saw, my healing rift nearly departed. Stag buff. Prop. I got a healing rift straight away. So again, this is showing you the safe strategy of it. Now we're in need of ammo. So we haven't run out of ammo because there's plenty of it in the middle. We just need to go and get it. So the thing of this is you need to bait the boss. So I bait him over right side. He'll do his void attack. I'm looking. You can see I'm rotating my camera. I'm looking to see where that void stuff is. Because if that hits you even for a second, I said, you're off. You're dead. I could see that's where people probably would die. And I have lost the GM solo last season, I believe. I was on the last phase. I was doing it with Dead Man's Tail. And I was really disappointed because I was wanting to do a video on it. I died on the last phase, just going for ammo. I was just casually went out, was like, right, we're done now. I was casually, and then I died from the void stuff. Um, it's a case of learn from your mistakes. I learned from that mistake, and I always remember to, when I'm jumping to middle, bait him to right, look at him while you're going for your ammo, just to ensure where them void um, streams go. Because if you stand, the, the void stream works like this. Obviously it's three lines, but they, the line ends with a void Sophia, if you like, and then pushes you up. If you get caught by the end of it, you only take half damage. That's fine. If that happens to you, that's fine. Like, it's not ideal, but it's fine. You won't die. But if you get caught in the middle of the tether, the middle of the stream, if you stand in it, that's it. You're off. You're dead. So that's everything you need to know about the boss and his mechanic. When he gets to half HP, he'll go immune. It's re it's re this is really key that don't do too much damage while there's adds alive. So when you get him, you haven't done this, you'll know by his HP bar. So it's when his HP bar is around 60% value, you'll kill the last wave of adds, the last wave of the adds before the free plate mechanic. Because if you kill if you kill him, if you make him immune, the still legionary is up and you need to capture a plate. You've just made the first plate capture really hard. Even if it's just three legionaries, they can ruin your day. They'll throw nades, they'll they'll shoot at you, uh, and then you're gonna have gladiators spawn and you're gonna have dogs spawn and you need to be on the ball with that. So have all adds dead. Then you wanna just focus you and the boss, do you with a hard shot. And just wait for immune. Stand next to the plate you choose. You can choose right, middle or left. I choose right. The reason why I choose right is because right is the hardest plate to capture. But if you stand right side 
and capture that first, you've just eliminated the hardest place. Middle, not too bad to capture. Left, not too bad to capture. So do it like that. This is the last phase of ads, by the way. So there was one more phase before he went immune, which is good. We're doing a stasis turret on right, because my plan was to sort of not do damage to the boss first. Said if you do too much damage, which is easy done with Weaver Hard, because you just pack a punch on the boss with Breach and Clear. So focus the ads, forget the boss. But if you stand right, you can sort of hide from the boss. If you don't feel safe about uh, confronting two or three legionaries, use your machine gun. That's what it's there for. You are going to run out of ammo. It's just a thing because this machine gun doesn't have a lot of ammo. You are going to run out of it. But there is going to be chances and opportunities when you get heavy bricks. I didn't have machine gun ammo finder on. And looking back at the run, I should have put that on. I ran dynamo instead, which gives you super energy on classic, on healing rifts. But you need to be super duper close. I didn't realize how close you've got to be to abs. So I didn't get it to proc as much as I wanted it to. So that's four energy on your helmet. I could have easily just run a machine gun ammo find on my helmet, which would have been a plus three. So I could have allowed for that. So I would recommend you're better off probably with just LMG ammo finder. <clears throat> so the boss is now half HP. As I said, we're sort of... Um, wanting to get him immune but i think i'm going for armor run right now there was a heavy brick close to him but the problem is if you get an ammo on right side that's harder to get because if you go right he stays right so and the problem is i know how quickly he goes to right side even when you're going over there he could go over there and stomp you and one shot you so i decided against it i do have 50 bullets which is enough to capture at least one plate so I was sort of managing the risk. And we have a super as well. That's going to do a lot of your work. You'll, fi you'll find that. So the boss is immune immediately on the plate as soon as possible. It increases your chances tenfold. Just that extra one second or two really helps. You can move hard the um, gates. They won't help you that much because the ads will just walk through it. You definitely want to do a weaver hard close to the... Um, Play it if you can, and then once the ads around you, you need to do your super sooner. See how me optimizing getting on the plate sooner, even if I hadn't popped my super, I would still capture that plate there. But I popped the super to eliminate risk. You get the damage resistance from super, and it means you've guaranteed that capture point, and that's good. Because this is the hardest part of the fight, is getting the plates. If you can capture the plates, you can do the run, you're fine. But obviously, with the spawns, so I'll explain that. So the first half of the fight, the ads are fixed to the HP. You do 10%, you get a wave. You do 10%, you get a wave. This, obviously, the, the boss is out of the equation. So the ads are relied upon the legionaries. They're not relied on plates. So say, for example, you step on a plate, you're not going to get more ads because of that. It used to be like that. You're now going to get ads if you kill legionaries specifically um, you'll get more gladiators and dogs that's your punishment that is your punishment for it so to avoid that is you need to kill your wave of dogs and gladiators you do that by just jumping around do your stasis nades i really like middle people would say that as dangerous jumping around like this but it's actually okay because the ads don't really hit you from mid much um, and you're safe from gladiators. You just need to be on the ball at all times on where gladiators are placed. Because if one gets you weak, then middle could hit you with some solar damage and you're dead. At all costs, do not allow a gladiator to melee you. Because you can, as I said, they can melt. So always, you know, be specking for your weaver hard. One weaver hard shot to the body. Um, we'll kill a gladiator. Be on the um, aware for dogs. There might be a dog alive too that you don't know about, but you'll know if you listen to your audio cues. Ads in this game give out audio cues. So I've turned down my um, 
voice dialogue so you know when the vo uh, when ghost talks and things like that I've turned all that stuff off I've turned down music volume the game volume because he, he just gives you a bit of peace and quiet to concentrate on what you're doing so and that might throw a nade as I said scorched earth song so it's gonna happen a lot you're aware exactly where that nade went because you haven't got a you haven't got background music in you know you could get distracted easily so I have I've found that that's helped doing grandmasters is turning all that stuff off you've heard it a thousand times over you know how the music goes turn it off and just have SFX volume to 10 and you can hear ads walking around especially if you've got a headset on you can hear them walk around you know exactly what's going on at all times so right now we're trying to get dynamo to proc didn't because it wasn't close enough to the ads which was a shame I would have got my super quicker but it's fine what I'm trying to do as well is weaken all the ads that works out massively if you weaken the four legionaries and the void backpacks you could literally just machine gun them all down when you start to get on your plate it means you melt them all quicker when you need to you won't get extra ads if you just weaken them you will if you kill them though so that's another strat of making this a little bit easier it makes the plate mechanic less daunting it's a case of now we're waiting on our healing so as I said I captured plate the right side plate which is the hardest one <clears throat> or it is the hardest one if you don't do it first we've done that first that's out the way so it's just middle and left now because of how the map works and how cabal work they slowly move and jump to location to location so if we go over to right side you can bait all the ads to that side and then what you do is you then immediately run to left that gives you a bit of breathing space to get on the plate then the ads will start to push for example if I was on left side and I went on left plate the ads are there they're on top of you already little tips like this help out in the run <clears throat> then we'll run to the uh, left side try and do a stasis turret nade earlier than what I did but that's decent ish like that's not bad placement and then we can do a healing rift and then just go ham with your machine gun forget about ammo like if you if you expel all your ammo just because you've captured a plate then that's a win because you've just done one of the hardest bits of the run you're gonna end up getting ammo later on and also supers help out massively I could have captured this plate without doing a super but again I eliminated the risk by saying right well just in case that gladiator comes you know I've popped a super and I'll still you know I'll still be safe and that's the whole idea of this run is capture your plate safely always you know learn from sort of that sort of lesson rather than saying well actually I could do this quicker capture one plate with no server and now I'll get the last one with my server yeah you could do that and save a whole bunch of time you could say five ten minutes um, but what for this is why I don't get with people why does the emblem does the um, not the um, does the concrete title seal say you won't get the triumph because you took 55 minutes as opposed to 50 minutes I really don't get it unless somebody's done an incredible speed run on a grandmaster I don't really get why people are trying to optimize runs by saving five minutes I really don't understand that I understand it if it's a speed run and they got a world record in it because that's the sort of stuff I used to do on the all night force system I get that when they're competing for times but if they're not competing for times they haven't labelled it as a speedrun but yet they're speedrunning it that doesn't make any, any sense to me at all you want to do stuff safely on Grandmasters they're notorious for being difficult people say that they're probably the highest nightfalls we've ever had and they probably are they probably are but the prestige system was difficult as well in 2017 D1 Nightfalls were never as difficult as people make out, make them out and I'm a D1 veteran player and I can honestly say I've got like two, three thousand hours in that game and I can say the Nightfalls are now to a new level to what they used to be contrary to belief because that was just then the game's advanced the Destiny 2 is a far superior game to Destiny 1 the only problem is D1 came out in a time when there was nothing else like it so if you can compare the time period from then to now, that was more revolutionary then than what Destiny is now. You can go by that by just looking about how 
often the game gets streamed. It's nowhere near D1 Heights for streaming, and even YouTube. It, it just isn't. There's nowhere near as many creators, content creators. There's focal main ones, but there's not as variety as there used to be. There used to be content creators everywhere, and all of them would get a lot of views. Like, the main big ones, there's a lot of big ones, and there's no nowhere near as big. But, that makes it a better environment for someone who is a big content creator. It's better for them, because they've got less competition. What they do, they can pretty much do what they want, which is why we're seeing bad content being made. There's some good content, there's some really good content, but some of the stuff that I see, and people are gaining subscribers off this stuff, and they're just spreading news that's just a lot of rubbish. Some of some of the content, I'm not talking about solo stuff now, I'm completely off that. I'm talking about people who are talking about leaks and talking about what to expect next season and all this stuff. It's a lot of rubbish. Don't need to watch it. Don't need to watch it because some of it's just based on theories and saying, oh, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Just go on Reddit if you want to look at that stuff. You don't need to give somebody a load of watch time. And you're giving that person a living as well and, and, and they're spreading a load of rubbish. They're giving out general advice, and a lot of people are talking about stuff that they don't even know about. And that's where it just annoys me. Because you've got people who are solo grandmasters, and they don't get barely any views compared to these big people who get 50, 60,000 subscri uh, 60, views. And there's people who are solo grandmasters working hard every week, and they're not getting any exposure at all because it, YouTube, because of... The algorithm not supporting them, they support the bigger people, they support people who can do keywords, who know how to tag videos and all that stuff. It's not supporting the true gamers, it's supporting people who know how to do YouTube and it's a shame because if if YouTube was based off who's the best people giving out advice, the roles would switch and the people who are doing all these news videos that aren't good, they would be at the bottom of the list and the people who are actually giving out sensible advice like actual common sense logic like even advice to your friend same thing rather than you know just being generic news type things then everything will be different but that's just sort of what we what what it is now we'll capture on the last plate same thing i do my turret nade i used my machine gun i did pop my server in the end because that worked out it ensured that I definitely captured the plate, it also ensured that I would be able to kill gladiators. Your super's not that useful, it is useful and it isn't. It's not too useful because it isn't a DPS super, it's not built like that. But it is good for clearing ads and stopping ads on Grandmaster, so that's why I used it there. It clears out the gladiators and now we're on the final phase of the fight. I was really pleased how Weaverhod worked for me on this. Because it's a special weapon, it's more the ammo is more readily available than what Anarchy is. <clears throat> Anarchy has 26 shots base, which is really good, but Weaverhard has 20 shots base, with special ammo dropping crazy because of GL ammo finder. So I can spam Weaverhard on the boss, use my turret nades, and literally all we're going to do is jump up and down using safe zones. Barely using my primary because it's not needed. I'll use my machine gun here and there if I need to. But my focus is this. is just completely doing damage to the boss to get this over with. You can safely do that. There is a lot of ads that will spawn in middle because obviously the ads are fixed to the boss HP. So if you're doing like two phases of damage, then you're going to get two waves of ads at once. Just be careful when you are jumping up and down. If you're worried, do a healing rift and you can jump up and down in the healing rift and still have an overshield. So you can still jump in your healing rift and you'll still have that. That means you can still have the cover that I was having just there. Uh, he won't do his void move, he'll only do his void move the boss when you move. So right now I'm expecting him. I'm expecting him to do it, which he hasn't. And the funny thing is why he hasn't done that, which is something I learned on this, is because the, the stasis turret damage and the wither horde was staggering him and stopping him from doing his void move occasionally which was really good so this worked out really really well i was pleased with this ending if anything i was pleased with this the most like how this end part went because what it's doing is 
Weeper Horde's doing two things at once. It's doing massive damage to the boss. It's doing damage to all the ads surrounding. If I'm getting freezes with the turrets, which is a lot, then uh, Whisper of Fishes is helping out because it's uh, killing the exploit targets, which is doing additional damage, chain and effect, to other ads around. And it's keeping the boss in place. So all this stuff going on, on at once means I can just spam with a horde and I don't need to worry too much about ads. Because as I said, it's pretty safe at the back of the map as long as you know what you're doing with your jumps. <coughs> when rotating between right, middle and left, you always want to be looking at the floor once you've done your jump. Or looking at the boss. Or hearing the boss. If the boss will have an audio cue to say he's doing his attack. Which is like a gong sound or something. It's like a weird noise. So you'll know he's doing that. As soon as he's doing that, you're looking where is the stream. Because he can actually... The boss intensifies his void attack. So you can do them two back to back. Like instantly. Um... So just be careful of that, so you could do one, which is three streams, and then you could do another. That would be six streams on the floor. Then you've got to be careful. Okay, because then, then you've just increased the chances of you might die. You know. <coughs> so, you just keep doing the weaver hard, as I said. There is, a, there is a time when you just see there, so there's three waves on the floor and then you're doing his attack straight away, so you've got to be careful. We're well, coming up to a super, I would just recommend using that, sort of when the boss is lower HP, because if you go up and super the boss, the boss could stomp you. So I would just use your super more ranged, as ranged as possible. Which, when you pop your super, obviously there's a heavy version of it, uh, and then there's the... Um, Shatter. So you freeze people with the heavy and then the light attack is to um, shatter the frozen crystals. So what you want to do is sort of use it as from range as possible. Because even though you're in your suit, there's still a lot of ads, a lot of ads up. And as I said, the boss could still wreck you with his void attack, even if you're in a super. So your super's not going to be... If it was Chaos Rage, if it was Nova Bomb, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna pop my super on him. Because it's a ranged, heavy style attack. And it's going to do massive damage. Whereas this super's not got that utility. But it's the turret's that good. It's been good for everything else. It's been good for defensive play. It's been good for capturing all the plates. Um, so it's still... There's minuses and positives to everything in terms of, you know, which there should be in a game like this, that it's a strategy game, it's coming that way, it's a, you know, it's a looter shooter, yes, but they're getting more RPG with the way things are getting set up, so there should be, you know, bonuses and negatives to everything, so the boss is literally one shot, I'm spamming my LMG, you'll see I'll get the Adept Hung Jury, which didn't turn out to be a god roll, but that's essentially how you would do this, hope you enjoy it, thank you.